Very good. Uh, hi, welcome back to the Clearway Radio Facebook webinar. Today is a special live show with the uh, attorney Lucas Garriston from Burgos and Garriston Frembler. So, good news, good news to everyone. Yesterday, I mean, later today, mor today morning, as we saw bulletin got released, released that everyone, everyone got, everyone know the EB2, EB3 moved a couple of years, especially EB3 is a the better better year is uh, more to the to, till 2015 so here today uh, the session uh, focus on october 2020 visa bulletin to clarify the question from morning we we saw a lot of uh, uh, back and forth information from the uscs so here the lucas came to today show to explain and uh, uh, give the more information the October visa bulletin and the process and steps, USCS steps and what uh, what is the steps for the uh, apply the 485. So now we welcome to uh, Lucas. Lucas, uh, welcome to today's web live webinar. Hi, Venkat. Thank you for having me again. Um, it's great yeah. news this morning to wake up and see the dates move uh, drastically, uh, you know, in advance for people to file. Uh, and uh, have a chance to go ahead and start that process to get EAD and move forward. Yeah, exactly. It means uh, today morning, wake up, we saw the visa bulletin. Everyone is excited to, it means everyone waiting for the visa, October 2020 visa bulletin because the last uh, one month, everyone's saying is uh, the EB, EB2 and EB3 is uh, um, will move to the Maybe everyone had anticipated to 2014, 15, and 16, but uh, EB2 unfortunately that ended up um, May 11, 2011. But a little bit um, uh, disappointment EB2, but uh, luckily EB3 is moved to the 2015 January 1. Maybe is a good chance to um, the EB, EB2 categories is good chance to downgraded EB3 and they can apply. Maybe you can give them more information so that everyone uh, will make a plan and uh, everyone will uh, uh, gather the information. Then they, they can proceed. We can we, today we can um, uh, the, give, we can we can give the more information if you have any questions on uh, the downgraded EB3 to e, e, EB2 to EB3 and uh, any other other questions. The, please post uh, your questions on Facebook page. Uh, uh, Lucas is ready to help to you. So that's it, uh, Lucas. You can you can you can start now. Sure. So uh, it's great news again. You know the dates moved. EB two for filing date is fifteenth uh, of May two thousand eleven. The uh, <clears throat> for EB three the filing date is uh, the first of January two thousand fifteen. So uh, this is really good news. This is a, lot, a, a drastic movement uh, with the visa bulletin. And USCIS today uh, also has, you know, published the uh, visa bulletin and on their page to, for the, their filing dates for adjustment of status. So everything's in accordance uh, to move forward now um, at the first of the month. Um, <clears throat> a lot of people have been uh, asking me today, you know, well, you know, Lucas, you know, I have an EB2 uh, priority date, you know, January 15th, 2012. What should I do? And, you know, the first question would be, are you still with your same employer that filed your I-140? If so, you know, the downgrading is a possibility. Uh, you know, it so sounds kind of funny, but you're basically decreasing EB2 to EB3 and and. <clears throat> And actually upgrading your priority date to where you can file your adjustments. So uh, downgrading would mean that you're filing a fresh I-140. Uh, now, when you do that, as long as uh, you know, you're still at your same employer, there's no more, there's no additional requirement for recruitment process. So you don't have to go through, you know, the labor filing and everything else that takes up so much time. Now, uh, what you can do is go ahead and file concurrently if the priority date's available. Uh, I-140 with your adjustment of status, I-45, 765, 131, et cetera, et cetera, uh, for you and your, your family, your derivatives. 
And uh, now the only caveat is, you know, premium processing wouldn't immediately be available because uh, Department of Labor is going to have to forward the um, labor certification to USCIS. So it's two government entities, uh, agencies, and, you know, USCIS can't um, adjudicate the case without the other uh, form from Department of Labor. So uh, typically, you, you know, it's not available until after receipts is is issued and things like that, then you can upgrade in the future. But the most important thing would be just the filing of the adjustment of status so you can get that process started. Um, and people would ask me, well, you know, why is it so important to go ahead and file adjustment of status if right now um, the final action date's still, you know, years away? And, you know, A, those dates are also moving pretty well. And, um, you know, we expect those to continue moving uh, in the near future due to the issues with COVID-19 and other factors. You know, maybe next year we have new government uh, in, in charge and maybe comprehensive immigration reform is on the top of the list. So maybe by this time next year, you know, we'll have uh, thousands of ex additional visas available to help with this backlog. Uh, or some other plan in place to help alleviate the, these backlogs where people aren't uh, stuck in H-1B status with pending on 140 for years and years. Uh, that's one. Uh, two, most people in this situation are, you know, working with a consulting firm, and you're very limited as far as mobility, if you want to go full-time, if, you know, what if, what's going to happen if I do go full-time, and, you know, there's a layoff or cut back and I lose my status and I join another employer, you know, there all these are worries and thoughts most people have. So what do I mean by this? Well, is my new employer going to file uh, a labor if I join? What is, you know, uh, the security I have with my job, right? So most people are worried about that and it's hard for them to take new opportunities because of these worries. Uh, so if you port your, so if you file your adjustment now and your adjustment status is pending for six months or more, it allows you to port or change employers without going through and filing another labor or uh, an additional uh, I-140 in the future. All this is is whenever your your priority date becomes current, um, you know USCIS will issue uh, you know an RFE and they'll say you know we would need a I-45 supplement J and as long as your application has been pending for six months or more, you can go ahead and uh, use your new employer uh, and just submit that one form, and it makes it much easier. Uh, and so you have more mobility, portability, and this allows you to have more security for you and your family. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks, Lucas. You are giving uh, wonderful information. Events. Uh, I think, uh, Lucas, this is the uh, industry in green card industry, this is the first time happened. The EB3 is move forward, way move forward, right? So everyone have a lot of question. It means um, most of the EB2 category, it means in current uh, immigration process, so most of in uh, in EB2 categories. So everyone is uh, eagerly waiting. What could we do the next step? The before the just understanding is uh, from morning to evening. The U.S. is is keep changing the uh, dates. Everyone is confused. The which date is going to be taken is a final date, final action date, or filling date? Uh, at least, uh, can you confirm which date we go for it now? First, we can clear this one. Then we go we go we go to the topic wise, and we can discuss very detailed. Uh, already, we have the, some questions already posted. We will discuss on this. Uh, can you give this uh, uh, first? So very surprised. I, I didn't see in uh, uh, in history this is the first time happening in Green Card. So can you explain which date we are going finally? <laughs> That's a very good point, uh, Venkat. So you know, there's a lot of clever people uh, that are able to you know utilize <clears throat> computers, computer systems, web page, landing pages, uh, so on and so forth, and. Uh, I think what happened is, you know, uh, there was a format or a template that was set up on a landing page and the link was not actually published. So 
a lot of people were able to, uh, you know, there's a way you can look at the, the uh, URL and, and find, the, you know, the, the next uh, posting for the bulletin. So they're sequential in order. So maybe at the end of the, the URL, it says, you know, the slash 55 and then the next month will be 56. So I always tell people, you know, wait until the actual date is published. So someone had that link and, uh, you know, they're pretty clever with that. And obviously, uh, USCIS, but, you know, it, nothing's official until it's actually published. So when it was actually published, they used the filing date, not the actual um, the final uh, date, you know, uh, that most people were worried about today. So, uh, it, you know, it's a bit of a panic for most people, but everything was turned out to be fine. Yeah. It's been seen since morning events. A lot of uh, the social media is actively publishing minute to minute update. Even something we thought there's something, hey, USA is something, is what went wrong or something? <laughs> Literally surprised. Uh, everyone confused because uh, this is a hot topic today. Every, from morning to evening, everyone focused this um, October. 2020 visa bulletin because uh, this is the history never happened. This is the first time the EV3 is uh, moved forward. Uh, everyone wants to get the more information and uh, act accordingly. So next is, let's say, as we discussed, uh, you may know most of the H1 holders on EV2. Now the EV3 is moved, moved forward to the 2015 January 1st. So what is the chance to downgrade and if, if we have the chance, what, can you give them more uh, detailed steps uh, on downgrade process? Uh, sure. <clears throat> so downgrading would just require that obviously you need to still be with the employer who has the most recently filed I-140 with the appropriate uh, you know priority date. And let's say it's EB2, then you can go ahead and downgrade by refiling another I-140, so it's a fresh petition. It's going to be an additional petition. It's not going to be replacing or renewing or doing anything else. It's just a completely independent uh, petition utilizing a previously filed uh, certified labor uh, ETA 9089 form. Now, uh, you're able to do this because the ETA is just showing uh, you know, the recruitment steps made, uh, was certified by the Department of Labor, uh, but it doesn't, the ETA itself doesn't designate EB2 or EB3 or any other, you know, employment-based category because that's something that USCIS uses. So whenever, you know, that process is done, there's an approved or sometimes even a denied I-140, you can reuse that uh, labor certification even if uh, it's expired after the six months. So that's the main thing. And, of course, you know, obviously, if you're with the same employer, you can just resubmit. Now, like we mentioned before, you're not able to submit in premium processing immediately because um, the uh, USCIS has to labor, Department of Labor, and that <laughs> does take some time. But you can file concurrently with your adjustment of status and everything else. So why is this important? Well, let's say uh, I think up to December 2014, EB2, uh, there's probably 100,000 I-140s approved, okay, for India. Now, okay. EB3, up to that same time, probably only has, you know, 50,000 uh, I-140s approved, if that. So, when everyone starts moving, uh, those dates will fluctuate in the future as far as filing dates. So, it's very important for the month of October to be organized, make sure you have all your ducks in a row, and go ahead and have that ready to file. Yeah, Edmund, so this is a very good news to EB2, Edmund, so we have the chance to downgrade EB2 to EB3, but um, I have a couple of questions, uh, Lucas, and as most of the people, Edmund, so maybe they have the experience or maybe they've seen some other kind of uh, scenarios, if we up downgrade to EB2, EB3, is there any chance to get the RFEs or denial denial the petition did you see in your experience um you know i like to say you know every case is unique to itself 
uh, there's always going to be a possibility for RFE. There's always a possibility for some type of denial. Obviously, to continue with your adjustment of status, you're going to have to have that I-140 petition approved. Uh, you know, it can't be revoked or, or denied so you can move forward with your case. So obviously that is a key element to this. You don't want to abandon your non-immigrant visa unless it's an emergency. So obviously you want to try and stay in your non-immigrant status on H1 just in case something does happen or go wrong. Uh, but, you know, for the most part, it's pretty much if you're if your EB2 was approved and you're in, and you're still working for that employer, uh, if you if you think logically, uh, if you have a, a, um, a labor from what, 2012, OK, the prevailing wages 2012 were probably much less. So let's say it, back then it was 65 or 70 K. Well, I'm sure pretty much everyone in H-1B status now, especially like in major major met- metropolitan areas on level two, you're at 90K plus. So the ability to pay has been satisfied there as long as your uh, employer, you know, you can establish that with payroll records. Now, the main issue might come up if you downgrade where uh, maybe you have a smaller consulting firm employer uh, and, you know, you're not working for the employer right now but they're still going to try and file this and, you know, sponsor you for future employment. Uh, but their tax returns don't have enough uh, profit to show that they have the ability to pay you. Well, well, then that could be one issue that could come up. But obviously you want to consult an attorney before you p- move forward. You want to make sure that it, everything is prepared correctly. You want to make sure that you're not wasting your time or money filing uh, if in the end it's just ultimately going to be denied or, or uh, revoked. Okay. Yeah, that's good. Most of the people they think uh, if you downgrade it to EB2, EB3, maybe somehow it will get any RFEs or denies because, as you said, it's a case to case. Definitely, depending on the employer related, because uh, there are uh, some documents required from the employee, employer to apply the another. I-140 for EB3. So in this case, exactly you said is a company status and a company uh, statistics, maybe profit and shares that could be uh, uh, involved to this this case. Uh, maybe diff- better to work with the attorneys and uh, uh, get get proceed for the next step. That is a good one. Uh, Lucas, it means, uh, I saw, maybe I heard uh, if we apply or down, downgrade to EB2, EB3 uh, is have the premium process or USCIS allowed to the premium process? No, so like is any discuss- specific is any specific uh, scenarios? Let's say uh, it went, so I, I applied maybe one XYZ uh, center the first time. The second time so also I'm sending to the same uh, same center. Maybe I can uh, apply in the premium process. Do you do you see any kind of um, steps or scenarios to even condition terms and condition to apply the premium process? It's a very good question. So in the past, uh, you know, if we've ever encountered this issue, obviously when you first file, like what we said earlier, you're not permitted to request premium processing because uh, USCIS is going to have to re- request and uh, get a copy of the. Uh, previously filed uh, ETA 9089 labor. Now, typically, once that's received, you can upgrade. I've done it before where you can upgrade the I-140 back to premium. But, um, you know, in this case, like what we were saying earlier, the, the key is to be able to use the concurrent filing. So we're all in a, in a time crunch here. You know, at the beginning of, or at the end of this month, but pre- really filing in, in October, you want to have everything ready. So when you file, you can file everything concurrently. And, uh, you know, it's really important because if there is one step missed or something's not correct, if you can imagine if, you know, you get a package back that was rejected, um, <clears throat> you know, it could be in November. And with so many people uh, downgrading from EB2 to EB3, that filing date could regress so if someone who has a 2013 or 2012 
uh, EB2 downgrading to EB3, they might lose an opportunity if everything's not correct. So it's very important to, it's more so important to have everything correct and to worry about premium processing at the moment because you're most focused on sending everything uh, with the I-140 concurrently. Okay. So here, uh, one question, Lucas. Let's say we apply the downgradable EV3 on concurrent process. So how much time it will take? Can we get the approval uh, October 1st to October 30th window? Or what is a, what is a, your suggestion? Let's say if, if you, what U.S. is a take on it, and so if they are accepting the application, just we send the file to the USCIS. It USCIS will consider to as a approval window even after. Maybe my question is: uh, it means every time, every time the green card process, right? Green card numbers. The now we have the number is a uh, EB3 is a uh, 2015 January in November bulletin. Maybe it retro, retro um, regret to uh, back to maybe 2011 or 2012. In this scenario. Can you give the more elaborated uh, how we can proceed, maybe how we can um, take a steps to apply? Well, uh, of course. So, you know, what we're talking about here, again, are two separate key elements when we're when we're filing and we're looking at the Department of State visa bulletin and the one that is typically adopted by USCIS. So. There's two main groups. You have a final action date, which is something that's used to determine who, you know, what dates are ready for the queue to get the visa, the green card. Okay. Those, those dates are typically, you know, as far as the GC process goes, what you look at in regards to, um, sorry, what you look at in regards to, uh, um, you know, the final action date. Now, what we're talking about here, which is really key, is we're wanting to see the uh, uh, the filing date. So filing date means that, um, can you hear me? Yes, Lucas. Yeah. I'm sorry, my phone rang. So filing date means that, uh, you know, this is your opportunity to go ahead and file your application to go ahead and start the process, but the visa is not going to be available for some time. So, uh, you know, what we're looking at here is more or less the uh, securing um, the opportunity to get the application in. Once the application's in, uh, you know, USCIS will continue process it, processing that even if the dates regress. So the ability to continue renewing EAD, to get your advanced parole, to move forward that way, you know, even if the final action date regresses, you'll still be able to maintain EAD for however many years it might take. And again, what we're looking for here is um, either one of two things happening. Either the visa, uh, the dates continue progressing for final action because of, you know, our current health situation, or B, you know, I really believe that we're looking at hopefully having comprehensive immigration reform this time next year you know this is going to be number one issue when it comes to you know the new president if we have uh, joe biden if he wins uh, the election and has democrat democratic support in the senate and the congress uh pretty much on the top of their agenda in the first 100 days of the administration is going to be immigration reform you know that could have many different uh, flavors to it. It could be the same or similar process of what we have that we're all used to, and they just allocate more visas so people from countries like China and India with employment-based background can go ahead and have their visas. You know, it could be some of a huge windfall. Maybe there's a new process involved where you know there's uh, you know a, a different visa where you have instead of just EAD, maybe you have a, a temporary quote unquote, a temporary green card. And then after so many years, it goes to a permanent green card based upon the same, you know, uh, statistics or, or visas allocated by Congress every year. So there's what I'm trying to say is it's so important to at least get your application in the door, at least get the process started, <laughs> because 
we do not know what's going to happen that by this time next year. And if it, everything's in process now, it might benefit you. It might speed up the process to go ahead and have that there. Okay. Yeah. That is a wonderful information. Yeah. If uh, really the next president will focus on the reform the immigration system, everyone will happy. So many is country code. If even they, uh, uh, just work on the country quota so it will benefit it, it obviously it will uh, uh, helpful across uh, long waiting green card process uh, lucas it means can you give the more information if anyone want to degrade uh, uh, eb2 eb3 what documents required for process new i140 sure so Typically, um, what I've always asked is, I've had the conversation probably 30 times today with other clients, is, you know, just go ahead and get the same packet of everything that you filed for your EB-2, if you still have it, um, and have that prepared. You know, we're going to use the same education documents. We're going to use the same uh, experience letters, if you, especially if you're still with the same employer. We can't use, you know, the, any experience gained from that. So, I mean, if... 20 years ago, you worked for Infosys and then you know, TCS or whatever else, and then you're with your employer for the past 15 years. I mean, it's going to be the same evidence. Now, the one thing that we'll update is going to be, obviously, if your passport has uh, uh, been renewed, uh, it's, you're obviously all your H-1B uh, approvals to show that you maintain status, your payroll documents, tax documents, W-2s. Um, and then, obviously, your petitioner the company is going to have their tax return for the most recent year. Okay. It means basically whatever we applied for initial I-140, the same documents required to apply now, declared EB, EB2, EB3. Now, obviously, we need to, in this case, we need to work with the employer. Right? Without employer, is any possible to... Um, to downgrade the EB2, EB3. Let's say it means a lot of cases, it means uh, maybe a lot of cases. The most of the employee uh, might be changed one, com one company to another company. In these scenarios, uh, let's say the old I-140 with uh, the previous employer, the current employer is, is, is started to processing, but they did not have the I-140. In these scenarios, can you guide to them uh, what are the step, steps they need to take and uh, utilize this uh, October visa bulletin? So that's a very good question. And again, I'm going to try and cover all the basic answers that you would want to make sure you, you address. So let's say you work for a company A. And company A has 30 employees. Uh, and over the past 10 years, they've had a to you know people come and go of 70 more people. Okay, let's say there's 20 people like you who used to work for company A and now work for company B. And you go back to company A and say, look, uh, this is, there's an opportunity here. You never revoked my I-140. Um, I would like to get a supplement J showing that you're still interested in processing my case. And by the way, can I go ahead and uh, uh, downgrade two? So maybe an employer says, sure, I'll do that for you. We can go ahead and file, but again, going back to it, if you're no longer working for employer A and you're with employer B, when you file a fresh I-140, you know, the issue of ability to pay is going to come up. It's going to show, okay, the prevailing wage that we need to pay on this uh, ETA states 75K. So if there's 10 other people at 75K, that means the company has to show that don't work for company A right now. The company has to show 750K in profit. So, you, you know, we need to make sure before you just file something or you agree to do something but that we all examine all the evidence, get the full story. So we don't have any heartbreak in the future by going through all this stress and effort, have it filed, wait a year, and then have it ultimately have everything denied. You know, we don't want that to happen. Yes, Lucas, this is a very, um, very important time to them to take a action, maybe take a decision, and um, maybe we need to try to give them more information. So it, it information, this might help to them to 
uh, discuss with the employer, maybe discuss with their old employers uh, and uh, take the right direction to uh, fill this, maybe utilize this October 2020 visa bulletin. Uh, local segments, uh, I have a couple of scenarios. Uh, let's say as a, a wife and husband have both uh, I-140s. The one is a uh, EB-2, the another one is a EB-3. But EB-2 is a uh, priority date is 2012. The EB-3 priority date is uh, 2017 or 2018. But um, uh, the husband, even after the 2014, we have the H4 EAD, EAD option. So the husband is moving out from H1 to H4 EAD. So now he want to apply. It meant first, first, first thing is uh, he is moving a more out uh, H4 H4 EAD and uh, working with the other employer. Initially, uh, the what is the scenario if he want to utilize this uh, visa bulletin? The, do you give me the? Can you give me the steps? Uh, can you give me the suggestion on this scenario? So, if I understood correctly, so let's say uh, husband worked for employer A. Uh, he has <laughs> I one forty approved with a priority date in two thousand twelve, and then his wife is with her employer currently has I one forty, and husband's working on H four EAD. Is that correct? Yes, uh, Lucas. So yes. what you what you could do is um, the husband can uh, go back in, into the original employer if it's still in business. He can, uh, you know, say, you know, would like to continue with this. Is there a possibility for, you know, to file with Supplement J? Uh, because remember that I-140s are for future employment. The system was not designed for people to be here waiting for years and years and years. The system is basically, um, you know, within a, a short term, uh, I identify, identify a person that's here, maybe on a temporary, temporary visa, visa like H1. H1. I want to sponsor them. The sponsoring time takes, you know, however many months. And then I file the, the I-140 and the adjustment of status. You know, in the real world scenario, um, that's the idea of this. So, when we talk about future employment, it's just the we want to we have a position that's about to come up and needs to be filled. Now, some people with you know a visit, uh, priority date of 2010 or 12, you know that's like 10 to eight or 10 years of waiting. And uh, what a you know that so what, what has USCIS done here lately? They've added a supplement J to the I-45 to show that the petitioner is still wanting to consider that. Uh, I-140 petition is, you know, is valid for future employment. So that's going to be required. Um, again, you know, uh, if you pour it over to another employer, your I-45 has, has to be current, current uh, uh, currently pending, pending for, for six, six months, months. And then you can, your new employer can then subsequently also file supplement J. So there's a lot of options. Um, it's hard to get to kind of discuss in, in, broad topics all the options there are but you know there's so many opportunities now with the dates progressing as they've had you know if, if you speak to immigration attorney and discuss all the details of your case i'm sure you know you can find the solutions that it's going to be best for you and your family yeah thank you in this case uh, maybe it looks better to work with attorney and uh, uh, move to the right direction i think so so, Lucas, we have the, the the lot of questions on Facebook. Just uh, we go one by one, and uh, we we will try to give the clarification on the question. The first question is uh, from Krishna Wangaviti. It means he have the EB3 and the EB2 approval I140 with the same employee. Can I use the EB3 I140? Of course, uh, you can use the EB3 I-140 um, to file for the adjustment, and there's nothing uh, wrong with keeping the EB2 also uh, there. So both petitions you can have at the same time, um, and you know, obviously, you can utilize that to to file your adjustment of status. Okay, yeah. 
thank you the next question is most of uh, this is a uh, more relevant to the everyone uh, from the question come from Varun and uh, Anu Chandra and when so uh, they have an approved i140 from old employer in ev2 from 2012 and current employer still in process of form can my old employer file a uh, adjustment of status and uh, they can still continue with the current employer so uh, yeah so <clears throat> i've had this question quite a few times today and, and uh, just to clarify a, a few topics your current employer doesn't have any doesn't have any control over how you file your adjustment of status that's clearly you know your preference of who you want to work with uh, how you want to file it if you want to file it on your own work with whoever or whatever attorney you want um, that's clearly up to you. Now, if you go, if your current employer is currently filing um, a perm and you're still, you know, four or five months out before you even have the chance to file an I-140 and port your priority date, you can still go to your other employer, your previous employer. And, um, you know, as long as they agree to uh, file the supplement J when you file, you can go ahead and, you know, continue uh, that process. Now, there are issues whenever, again, um, when we do this, we want to look at this by a case-by-case -case basis to make sure uh, everything is, is valid. Now, most people are going to be lucky because, you know, here, I think, th three and a half, four years ago, um, AC21 was updated. So your I-140 uh, is not permitted to be withdrawn after it's been uh, approved for six months. So... You know, employers, uh, sometimes people leave on bad terms or whatever. And, uh, you know, it, at least that keep, preserves you from having your I-140 denied or withdrawn. But, you know, you can always go back and uh, go back to a previous employer if the I-140 is still there. Even to go back to it, man, so they need to apply the H-1 on previous employer. Then uh, they can apply the uh, I-485 I adjustment status. So that's not always required. Um, what you need is to remember this is for future employment. So, you know, you're going to need to have a supplement J filed from your previous employer. And, you know, uh, I don't know if, what queries might come about of, you know, their ability to pay. But so that's whatever it is, it's already been adjudicated with, you know, previously. Uh, if you wait six months, New employer can file supplement J also and port over your pending uh, adjustment of status. When you go to your visa interview, however far out that might be, you know, obviously that question will arise and you can uh, have your employment records with you and discuss that subject with the officer whenever you file or when you go through that process. Okay. Yeah. Thank you, Lucas. So uh, maybe another question is uh, uh, from Facebook. Uh, Jeet is asking, uh, he had uh, oh, I-140, the previous employer in 2015, old employer in EB2. Now he, he moved to the another another employer and uh, he want to apply the perm or perm or I-140. Is there any possible to apply the 485 with using with the uh, yeah, old perm. Well, it is possible to use to use an old perm. Yes, old employer perm. Let, let's say as a company A and company B, uh, the employee had uh, I one forty or perm as a company A. He moved to the company B. Now he want to apply the I one forty with the company A perm. Is a really is there any chance to apply or it really possible? So um, the perms are only valid for six months and you need to file an I-140 to have a perm preserved. And that's typically associated only with, uh, you know, each individual employer, because what it is, is, is uh, it's basically the employer verifying the recruitment process to show that there's not a valid American worker. They can handle that position. So, um, I, I don't know if the question was referencing the priority date from an I-140 or if it was focusing on the, the labor itself. Okay. Yeah, this is a, maybe 
the problem is maybe it only uh, related to the particular company. I think it was the i140 and uh, it was the 485 is great, but is a future employment for a particular other company. So in this case, uh, if if an employee any employees move to the another company, better to have the new form and the new i140 to go smooth process to apply the 485, I think so. That's correct, uh, Lucas? Correct, so you can port the date. Um, obviously, if you have an approved I-140 uh, and you go and you have a same or similar position, you know, with a, with a different employer, a different petitioner, you can uh, port the priority date. Um, and then from there, you know, if you choose to, you know, it, it might get a little, difficult to know exactly how you're going to change from EB2 to EB3 if that's something you want to do at that time. But uh, you, you basically have to have a same or similar job uh, to port that priority date. Now, the new employer will have to go through a new uh, recruitment process uh, and uh, file a labor with the Department of Labor, and you'll have to wait for that to be certified prior to filing the I-140. Okay. Okay. Uh, Lucas, uh, I have the uh, another one more question from the Pankaj Divedi. He, he had the I-140 with priority date December 2010, and uh, his wife uh, has I-140 from her employer with the priority date of February 2013. Maybe Pankaj's employer is process filling the new case in EB1. The, what would be the strategy for him? It means so whether maybe he is asking whether. It, he can able to use the EB1 or he can able to use the EB2 already moved to the May 20, uh, 2010. So what is your suggestion to him take the so, which process? EB1 so or EB2 or? How would you qualify for EB1? It would be the question. I mean, are you, um, there's three different, main categories that you would go with. Uh, uh, I mean, and, and plus, if you're 2010 EB2, you're very close, you know, also for a final action date, you know, and that could move here quickly. But I'd have to know more information uh, in regards to to the thought process of how, what you would do to qualify for EB1. Yeah, this is a um, pure based on case-to-case -case, uh, events. So we can... We can I'm not sure. Maybe we, we can, can ask him, him, reach out to the attorney and uh, get more details and take I mean, a better yeah, decision yeah. on this one. Because, because if, if you're, you're looking, looking for like NIW, NIW um, filing and you want, or if you're a scholar or, so, or some other prestigious position, you know, you have to have significant evidence to back that up, you know, and it's possible to have that. Or if, are you referring to maybe being an uh, EB1C where you're an executive or a manager, uh, you know, coming here, similar to what like an L1, uh, L1A person, person would have. So, again, like, like what Vinkat said, we just probably need a more of a detailed um, conversation with more facts. Yeah, yeah, it's true, uh, Lucas. I have one more question, uh, Lucas, from the Ajay Radik Ajay Radik Kaniela. I think he had the. Uh, I-140 approved from old employer with the priority date in 2014, and new employer still in process of form. It means he is asking that he can ask to old employer to downgrade from EB2 to EB3 and file the 485 adjustment. Yes, he could. Uh, now here's the caveat again, like what we were talking about. What is the capacity of the employer, like? What, is, what are their profits and losses? Because now that you're not on that payroll, that you're, the employer's going to have to show the ability to pay. So, you know, depending on the size of the company, if we're talking about IBM, obviously it's not a problem. They can uh, absorb however much they want. But if we're talking about a consulting company with 25 or 30 people, um, you know, they might not show profits of more than, you know, 100K at most. And then, you know, what are they... Um, how much room is there for that? So there's a few ways besides just profit and loss to show, you know, maybe the petitioner, they have a line of credit or other assets. 
But, you know, as a rule of thumb, I always look to see on the taxes, especially if you're not employed for that employer at that time and they want to file like this, how much available um, uh, profit is, it, is there to show the ability to pay? And that's going to be the key factor, especially on all, the, all these cases like this. And there's going to be a lot of people maybe going back to a previous employer saying, hey, can you help me out here? I want to downgrade or can you continue my... I want 40 and support me when I want to file right now. Uh, okay. Yeah. Thank, thanks, uh, Lucas, for information. Evans, I have the an interesting question here. The Ramakrishna Chawala, he has a, he had EV3 pre, pre-audited May, 2020, uh, May 2012 with company A, and the company A is acquired by company B. Does company B will file the I-140 with 485? Uh, so it depends on the structure of that transaction, depending on, again, how, how that was done. There are certain scenarios where I would say, no, that's not necessary. Uh, and then there's other scenarios where that would be, uh, yes, that would be necessary. So it's more how, how that merger took place or how the, you know, what the identity is as far as is the entity if it's just a separate entity purchased if it's a, a subsidiary if it's something fully absorbed or, you know there's a lot of different uh models where you know we have a business merging or being bought out by another business so i'd, I'd need probably more details on that to know for sure yeah yeah thank you the one more question is from venu pala uh, he had the I-140 on EB-2, pre-added date is 2012 July. If I downgrade to EB-3 with the same employee, do I need to apply the I-140 again? It means, uh, yes, we need to apply the I-140 again. Then the already, when we already discussed in the starting uh, in, in, the before, in, in the show, the we need to apply the 485 and we can have an option to apply the concurrent process. We can apply the 485 at the same time and uh, I-140. So that, that one question. I saw a question just pop up that's pretty good. It says, um, you know, if, if we follow our adjustment and then the filing dates regress, does that mean our EAD uh, applications also stop? And the answer for that would be no. Uh, so even if, you know, everyone files in October and the dates regress back to 2011 or 2010, um, you know, you're, you'll still be okay. So this, this is similar to something that happened in 2007. Um, there was such a backlog at the time, obviously nothing compared to now, that uh, the president uh, allowed anyone who has a pending I-140 with a visa that's not yet available, they could go ahead and file. Uh, for adjustment of status, even though the, the visa is not available. At the time, they were thinking that there would be, um, you know, comprehensive immigration reform that they were really trying to do. And the president, I think, really tried to help push this along by doing this. Uh, what ended up happening is a lot of people benefited from advanced parole and employment authorization. But, you know, they ended up waiting 10 years for the final action dates to move because, you know, Congress didn't take any action. Uh, to get that problem resolved. So uh, it's a blessing and also a curse. But like I said, I, I really believe if you get your foot in the door and you get this process moving, once your application's there and received, you have a receipt notice from USCIS, some action has to be taken. Does it not matter what dates regress or move in the future? So uh, when, when this is all happening and, and pending in the future, like I said, if there is some new policy or new law that comes out um, that puts you in a different category than maybe someone who's just on H1 or maybe someone on H1 with an I-140 with the priority date of 2017 that's not yet current for filing or, or final action. So that, that's something I, I would just recommend, you know, pay attention. Uh, if you have the opportunity to file, I would go ahead and file. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Nicholas. Evans, here I have a couple of interesting questions. The one of question from uh, Dino Kota. Evans, he had a priority date uh, 2014 AB2 with company A. And uh, currently he is on FTA since 11 years 
from now there is no uncertainty with the current job is it recommended to downgrade with the another company or stay with the company a wait for ev2 date move to in future so the question was if stay with company a and downgrade to eb3 if that's possible i think yes so when you downgrade it's not like you're abandoning uh your, your other i140 petition. petition you you, you ha can have two petitions right so, so you're, you're basically choosing which petition you're going to file the adjustment of status with so what you want to do is make sure um if this is the process you want to go through uh start that process and if something else happens and the dates really move fast on EB2 you know you could refile or re redo you know abandon the current uh adjustment status and refile or uh, you know choose a, accordingly whatever works best for you yeah hey man sir here one one interesting question uh, lucas now events we have the events eb3 is move forward 2015 january the most of the eb2 maybe don't go to the eb3 what is the future in eb2 events go fast or do you have any idea on future uh, eb2 who are in eb2 well, EB get move faster than eb3 or what is the scenarios here that's a good question so obviously there's uh, statistics and data where we uh, the public can see how many i140s have been filed in each category for each fiscal year what's been approved what's been denied uh, and we can use the public can use that as a guesstimate so when we're looking at five fiscal years so maybe 50,000 total eb3s compared to 100k or more 120,000 eb2s um we don't know how many of these are duplicated or you know filed for the same beneficiary but uh i would imagine uscis you know once uh, let's say vincat gets a, a benefit here uh, and here the beneficiary of another petition that like that would no longer be a valid petition because you can no longer get that benefit from that petition does that make sense so it could move either way i mean we have a large group of people that were tr everyone's just kind of moving back and forth <laughs> and so what we want to do is get everyone in the in the in one position moving because if you think about a, a large group um and let's say something does get solved and we have you know 50,000 people now in EAD and, and and things are not progressing or moving well i mean that's that's a lot of extra pressure on congress to get some action and, and take some action and move something right so I, i like i said i would be patient i wouldn't worry so much about these dates moving if you have opportunity take the opportunity uh you, you never know what tomorrow might bring but if this is something you want you've been waiting for go ahead and um whatever opportunity you have take it yeah, okay Yeah, look lucas uh, i have a events we had a lot of questions uh, maybe most of the questions are maybe similar to the other questions maybe i am picking the some events uh, some complicated or maybe some useful to the other other cases i have, I have one, one question. question maybe one of the suresh rashekar had the i140 approved with the employee a in eb2 2010 the current employer fill from in may 2020 in eb2 if if pom approves in another one month can i file the i140 with date porting and 485 together in mm -hmm. sir the same thing uh, lucas he applied the the new pom with a new employer let's say is a approved pom approved by maybe next couple of days or maybe october first week he want to you want to eligible to apply the 485 adjustment state concurrent process in october visa bulletin so you know that's a very good question and and what i would want to pause and make sure we cover is with this new i140 because you, you won't know if you can port the priority date until the i140 is approved so is it possible you know maybe now you, you're looking at a timeline of if i file in premium processing can i get the result back 
can I get uh, an approval before the end of the month so I can go ahead and file the adjustment? Is there going to be RFP? You know, there's a lot of things that where this is strategy. Um, if you feel confident and the attorney feels confident who's filing your I-140 that you can go ahead and get that priority date, then by all means, file concurrently. Um, uh, but if there's some doubt, I mean, if you're talking about you know, technologies, job duties, and things that might change for 10 years. Uh, what is the officer going to do looking at that as far as the portability goes? And, you know, sometimes that's not a, a 100% uh, given. And what I would recommend is just, you know, work with the attorney who's filing the I-140. Make sure you get their opinion. Hey, should I wait or should I go ahead and file concurrently? Um, and, you know, like I said, there's pros and cons to both. And you just... That, that's a very specific decision that you'd have to make reviewing all the facts of the case with the attorney. Okay. Uh, Lucas, I have uh, one question is uh, about the I-140 approved. Maybe Ashwini Nayak had I-140 from company A with the priority date in 2016. But currently, uh, maybe she moved to the new employer. Mm -hmm. new company so she want to go back to in she want to go back to india and come back with dates if if if, uh, if come back to us by the time if any current uh, in 2016 will she apply maybe she, will she apply the adjustment of status so from what i understand she went back home to india and she has an approved I-140 from 2016. Uh, if you want to, if you now to adjust your status, you have to physically be within the United States. Um, there's, there's some people, people unfortunately, that they had hardship, hardship this year because they you know, traveled back home, and uh, due to the coronavirus or COVID-19, they were unable to uh, get stamped, and so they're kind of stranded back home. Um, so whenever you get a chance to get stamped and you come back here, you know, you, maybe you can start that process. If, if that one uh, employer still sponsored you, if you're looking to um, start the process with a different employer, if, even if you're abroad, uh, you can do that, but you would have to rely on the final action date. Okay. okay so, so what, what we, we would, would do is, is we would then pursue a, what we call a consular process. And that's where you would do pretty much the visa process abroad. Uh, you go for your interview in Mumbai, Bombay, and, and then, you know, they stamp your passport with your 551G stamp and you arrive here as a legal permanent resident in the United States. Okay. Maybe uh, I have the one interesting question, uh, Lucas, from Sumant Reddy. So he had EB3, uh, what's, yeah, he had... Uh, uh, EB3 with the old company with the priority date 2012. Uh, what would happen to my spouse H4 EAD status if I want to go back? It means to say, let's say, uh, maybe uh, Sumant question is we applied uh, 485 and we got uh, maybe in process or something, or if we uh, if we if we applied on no, the, still the question is not clar clarify. Maybe you. Lucas, if you understand I, the question, maybe you can give them more information. Saying, so what he's saying is if you downgrade, um, and my wife is currently on H4 EAD based upon my EB2 uh, I-140, and I want to downgrade to EB3, what will happen with my wife's H4 EAD? And the answer is simple enough is nothing would happen. Um, the, the you, you can have two I-140 petitions at one time, uh, and your wife's case, I mean... You know, in the future, if you you could change and, and use the EB3 I-140 uh, for a future extension, and hopefully you wouldn't have to because if you file the uh, adjustment of status, and this is another topic uh, I've discussed today with a few people, uh, let's say your spouse is on H-4 EAD. Well, you can only legally work on H-4 EAD if you have your approved employment authorization document in hand. Um, you can't work on a receipt. You can't work uh, because you filed. It has to be the card in your hand. And, you know, if you go to GCEAD, even if the process might take a little bit longer, uh, you know, to go from point A to point B to get your 
green card than what you might you know be used to the at the end of the day if if your spouse is also working on the GCEAD then if you renew it the you can work on the receipt for 6 months so there's more uh cushion there in case there's something wrong or delay in producing the card because right now there's so many people uh who try and get a request to try and get their cards processed faster for h4 ead and they have to pause their employment or they lose projects or they have disruption in income you know th this is another way to help secure that to where you don't have as many stops and starts in your career yeah yeah that's good so Lucas, I have the another question. Uh, Balaji was from Balaji Vasu. His wife has a priority date June 2013 on EB3, and uh, he got a priority date April 2015 on EB2. Now my wife applied for the adjustment status. I and my wife, maybe both, if they apply the both, they will get the both EAD. So his person, I think, I I am an H1. Be say for say after some time, EB2 become the current and EB3 go back to the 2011, 2011 or 2012. Can I apply green card based on the EB2? I think uh, I understand the question, Lucas. Let's say the wife and husband have the uh, priority dates. Let's say now it is EB3 have the number, green card number. They applied for both families. The, the 485 is, uh, is under process to process later uh, maybe uh, maybe the retrogation or something maybe eb2 come faster maybe final date it come faster in this scenario uh, he can apply again or he can use the same 485 adjustment status to apply the filing date, final action date final action date or something see so that's a good question what i would say is you would want to wait until the final action date is current and then you would want to apply because you're probably going to have to abandon the other pending adjustment of status. Now, <clears throat> you, you, there's certain things you could do that since you would be a derivative on one, you could abandon one, uh, let one continue processing. But, you know, um, in, in those scenarios, probably the best thing to do under the current regulations would probably be to wait for a final action date make sure the date's not going to regress then you could go back to your eb2 and file uh that way there's no issue but yeah they, it will cause uh some disruption with the pending case that was filed yeah okay i think uh lucas we have a lot of questions and uh maybe most of the some of the question is the uh, same related to other questions so Edmonds, uh, today is a very uh, useful session to everyone. Edmonds, uh, since morning, everyone is confused uh, by USCIS uh, and maybe social media affect you. I think you explain the USCIS did not update pro events. They are ready to uh, process to apply, but um, between someone maybe hack or something, you can say hack <laughs> the <laughs> web portal and. <laughs> So everyone is confused, right? literally confused, what is going on, even so whether they, they're going to be taken of final action data or failing data or something. So uh, even so the final, maybe we can close this session, maybe another uh, the few minutes. So most of the questions uh, and uh, the questions are on EB2 and EB3, yes, so we can we can downgrade it to EB, EB2 to EB3, but uh, with help of your employers, with uh, uh, with the appropriate information to apply the new I140, we can conclude that actually. Uh, we can apply the I485 adjustment status and I140 concurrent so that uh, we can downgrade to EB2, EB3. And also you said there's uh, we can um, apply the i140 the pre uh, in premium process so that uh, it will get the very soon between between the window october uh, october visa bulletin maybe october window so that yes lucas i just want to add one one point not to interrupt um i, I want to just remind everyone it's very uh important to stay grounded during this process it's just like today for an example 
everyone was excited when the Visa Bulletin came out. Then everyone was uh, demoralized when they saw that <laughs> USCIS put the final action date. Maybe some other attorneys were irresponsible and shared that also on social media. You know, it, it's such a roller coaster, and you have to stay grounded. You have to take everything one day at a time, and you have to plan for the best. And, and what does this mean? It means... You know, it's great to go through the process with other people, to share the experience, to go through and, and have friends and community, uh, just, just like this, this uh, media outlet right here. We can all come together and discuss in a topic uh, in a comfortable setting and, and feel assured about what we're doing and what the process is we're going through. But at the same time, for every forum like this, there's probably four or five other forums that don't completely and not out of any ill will from anyone but you might not get the full story so if i share some experience i have uh, and venkat shares some experience he has it might not impact your case at all but all it does is give you anxiety and stress and we don't want that so we want to establish a forum and i think that's one of the the key tenets that we have here for our weekly show is we want to establish a forum where everyone can come here feel comfortable that we can uh, provide accurate information. Of course, you know, I have to have a disclaimer here that everything I'm saying is in a general response. And there could be uh, things we discussed today that I gave a general description about that don't necessarily apply directly to you. And it's very important that, you know, I'm available if anyone wants to uh, talk one-on-one, -on -one, I'm more than happy to discuss a case with them. Uh, and, you know, what I'm saying is, you know, this is a long and uh, tedious process. You have to keep your head straight, focus on yourself. Don't let others, you know, news or anything like that impact you. And, and just try and keep an overall positive attitude and mentality with this because it can very much, um, you know, you hear news like what came out today after such positive news and such negative news. And if you live on that roller coaster it will make you crazy especially after it takes all these years to go from point a to point b yes i understand uh, lupus it means uh, everyone is it means, uh, everyone is waiting for the green card process uh, lucas that's why they had the anxiety about the the uscs news and dates and priority dates so obviously so maybe in between if any rumors maybe everyone will follow the the rumors. That's why the, today morning, since uh, today morning to evening, we see a lot of uh, the rumors on dates. So literally everyone is uh, confused. So this is a simple case to everyone. Every, everyone is waiting for the great God. Great God. You bring a good point, actually. Uh, we open the platform to help the community so you can utilize and you can post your questions so the lucas is ready to help to you and this is very events uh, generalized questions if you have any specific the scenarios may be better to talk to your attorney and you can reach out to the lucas uh, lucas will help you don't take any action based on this information better to discuss even take the information to understanding and uh, get more information and make a steps, further steps, but don't conclude that, hey, this is the final information and uh, act on this one. Uh, so, so everyone have every, every question, every scenario is the individual, maybe one scenario, maybe one question, maybe it follow to the others. So better to have the, your question, your scenario, your scenario is for you only, not for others. So, Maybe we open this platform every week. Maybe today we did for the special live show. We are doing the live webinar every Wednesday, Central Time, 6 p.m. CST on Telugu NRA Radio Facebook Live. You can you can tune and uh, you can ask if you have any question, US, US immigration and um, US immigrations. Or you can reach out to the Lucas. Uh, for if you have any questions, uh, just uh, send an email to the info at the rate uh, I B G I M M law dot com. So uh, this is uh, our intention to uh, with you with community so that we can help to more people and larger, uh, larger, larger 
uh, audience. So, Lucas, maybe we it been it it been almost one and a one and a half hour. Maybe we can close the session. The final um, before going to maybe I have the couple of questions. Let's say if we apply the four eighty five adjustment, uh, do you know how long it will take for the get EAD? Well, that's a very yeah. That's a very good question. That's a uh, typically right now. You know, we're seeing processing times. You know, six to seven months. Uh, but if you can imagine, uh, USCIS uses uh, uh, first in, first out method. So um, we they also use vendors. Oops. So you know. It's the vendors uh, increased production and things like this. There could be some delays. Uh, so USCIS doesn't actually make the cards themselves, but they use people to make them. So hopefully they can hire more vendors to help with the production. But uh, yeah, unfortunately, it's a <coughs> FIFO process. And with more people applying, it can be a delay. But I'm, I'm looking at maybe six, seven months, I think, is a um, reasonable outlook. Okay, thank you. Yeah, I think uh, we uh, provide the more information. We we answered the most of the questions. Uh, still, we have a lot of questions. Maybe we have the limited time and uh, we could not take the more questions. Maybe if you get a chance, we we will reply. Or maybe you can reach out to the the locals, or you can reach out to the your attorney for more information for your queries or maybe if any scenarios. Uh, as I said, is uh, this platform we uh, we started every Wednesday uh, webinar. You can utilize the, anyway. Next one month, we have the uh, same green card fuel next uh, October till October end. So you can utilize this platform. You can post your questions on Facebook page. We can ready to uh, reply. You can uh, you can send to any information to the you know, Lucas. Lucas is ready to help. So finally, Edmunds, uh, we can yeah wrap up. Yeah, do you have any final words and any good news? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe <laughs> a, a, apart from this, <laughs> uh, I, you know, uh, I am open uh, to being uh, accessible to anyone who might have any questions or queries. So I'll do my best to respond in a timely manner and and uh, try and give as much advice. Uh, generalized advice as I can. Um, again, I'm grateful for this platform with uh, Telugu NRI Radio. Um, you know, we try and serve the community and try and give accurate information. So uh, that extends, you know, personally, if someone needs a consultation or something like that, I'm, I'm here, you know, obviously to speak on that behalf. So uh, I know it's frustrating if we didn't get to your questions, but I appreciate everyone tuning in and, and uh, participating because it really it does help community and, uh, it, you know, this helps out other people to go through this process uh, all together. So, again, uh, post questions uh, on the Facebook page. Uh, make sure you uh, follow and like us on, on Facebook so we can update you as uh, news comes out. And, um, you know, this is a program for the community. So any any topics you want to discuss, please uh, forward that to the P Facebook page. Vincap will definitely organize that and we'll have a show specifically uh, customized for you and uh, hopefully everyone will enjoy it then yeah thank you thank you Lucas thank you for associated with uh, Telco Nara Radio thank you for help your community uh, thank you. yes thank you thank you everyone today that tuned to the this web live webinar and uh, post your posted your questions so we are ready to help to you Please post your topic and any questions in next uh, coming webinar, live webinars. So uh, that's uh, it's uh, end of the show. We will we will connect the next Wednesday evening Central Time 6 p.m. on same platform. So until then, bye bye. Take care. Thank you. Thank you much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Lucas. Ah, thank you. Have a good week. You too. Thank you.